let us have a look at question two, okay? With question two, it says that an extra A shows the floor plan of Jan's house with a veranda, okay, in South Africa. And then we are told what a veranda is. So a veranda is also known as a porch or a stoop. Okay, um, it is an open area with a roof over it. Okay, so it says the following is an artist's drawing of one of um, the elevations of Jan's house. Okay, so before we even get started with this question, what do they mean when they talk about an elevation? Because we can see here that they said that now um, this following artist shows or the following artist's drawing shows an elevation of Jan's house. So what is an elevation? Okay. So when we're talking about an elevation, guys, we are talking about um, a flat representation of one side of a building or a structure. Okay. So here we see that we are given that flat uh, representation of the, this house, right? Okay. We only are shown from this drawing the front view of the house okay sometimes you'll get elevations that show the side view or the back view of the house right but in this case we are just shown the elevation of the front view of the house okay so it says use an extra a and the information above to answer the questions that follow it says write down the number of bedrooms on the floor plan guys please i mean you can't just use this um elevation to answer this question right here you need to use a mixture a to help you determine how many bedrooms are on the floor plan okay so let's have a look we're going to look at the floor plan that is on a mixture a and we're going to determine how many bedrooms are there okay so let us see so that is our annexure A. This annexure A basically um, is the floor plan of Jan's house, right? And we see that, okay, here we are given um, that compass here to help us determine direction, okay? So let's just quickly um, analyze what is happening here, right? That means that in this case, the north direction Okay, they tell you that the north is that way, meaning that, okay, this is our north, okay, this is our north, okay, because they tell you this is, the north is in that direction, okay, that is our north, and then remember guys, naughty elephant sprays water, so you need to move in a clockwise direction to determine where is east, south, west. Once you've determined where the north is, the rest basically revolves around your north. Okay, so where is, because let me just do it like this, right? We now know that, okay, our north is in that direction. So that means that this is our north, right? Okay, then we move in a clockwise direction. Your clock ticks in this direction, clockwise direction, okay? Then, right? Where is our east? That means that it's naughty elephant, okay, sprays water, right? So from here, we already know where's north, where's south, where's east, where's west, from just using this information that is given to us, okay? So now we are cool. We can continue to analyze um, this um, house's floor plan okay so we can see that on this floor plan this is the master bedroom we can see that this is the bathroom this is the kitchen this is the dining area this is the living area this is the veranda okay meaning that when you enter from the front do you see that is actually the front um of our house right because we have the veranda okay this basically shows this image that we see here do you see that this is our veranda Okay, so we see that you enter from the front, the veranda, then there's that bedroom here, meaning that, okay, this window is actually a bedroom, now. Yeah? Do you see that? Which is actually a bit snacks, ne? <laughs> I mean, maybe uh, that could have been like a, a a dining area or living area. Okay, but it's a bedroom. Okay, um, but it's okay. So we've got that bedroom there. That window shows the bedroom. Then from there, 
um, you've got your dining area, then you move to the kitchen, right? Meaning that when you enter this house, when you want to go to the kitchen, you go in that direction, okay? Then you've got your bedroom, okay? We're also given a key that shows the windows and the doors. That's nice and easy because you've done a, a lot of floor plans. That we've actually analyzed a lot of floor plans in the channel. So that's nice and easy. So that's nice and easy, right? And I think we're more than ready to to, to have a look now at, at the questions that are given to us, right? With the first question, remember guys, we had to write down the number of bedrooms that are on the floor plan, right? So from now using, um, we're gonna use this floor plan and we're gonna count how many bedrooms um, um, are indicated here, right? So we've got the master bedroom, it's one, two three so we can see that from the floor plan jan's house actually has how many bedrooms three bedrooms okay so jan's house has three bedrooms it says question 2.2 .2, which room will be the first room you will enter from the veranda okay all right so if you basically have a look at your floor plan right what do you see so if you enter from the veranda what is the first room that you enter you'll see that oh you actually enter which room the living room okay okay so we're gonna write that down okay so you enter the living room question 2.3 it says in which general direction does the master uh, bedroom window face okay so here we need to make use of the compass that is given to us to determine what is the general direction of the window of the master uh, bedroom okay so let us see okay so if you had to now um draw a line here right this is our we can see that this is our um the window of the master bedroom here right okay so which general direction is that room facing okay so i'm going to show you something remember guys if you were to basically continue to let's say um draw a line there and a line there and a line there and align uh, there, right? That'll help us to basically determine the general directions, right? So what would be the general direction? What is that? What, is, what general direction does this line represent? It is the northeast direction, okay? Northeast direction. What is the general direction that this line is showing? The southeast direction. What is the general direction that this line is showing? The southwest direction. What is the general direction that this line is showing? the northwest direction i have mentioned that when you're now naming these um lines guys you start with the north you start with the south right so your north and your south are your reference points right so it's the northeast southeast southwest northwest it is not east north it is not west west north it is not west south right to southwest you start with your north and your south as your reference point okay so from this now what do we see what does what is the general direction of um this window what do you see okay this window right is actually in the northwest i mean the northeast um direction okay right if for example we wanted the general direction of something that is towards the left then we would probably say that it's in the southwest um west direction but then we're looking at something that is towards the right right so what is actually towards the right we be focusing on that part there so it's in the north uh east direction okay so the general direction for um the window of the master bedroom is the northeast direction question 2.4 it says one of the door locks needs to be changed okay write down the probability so here now we are calculating probability okay write down the probability in simplified fraction form right that it is not one of um the interior doors so if they say it is not one of the interior doors what is what does that mean if it's not the interior doors that means that it is the exterior doors right so that means that we are calculating the probability right of the doors being or you're calculating the probability that that the, one of the doors that needs to be changed is what an exterior door 
Okay, so how do we start off this question? To start off this question, guys, let's actually build it up, right? How do you calculate probability? Probability is equal to your favorable outcomes divided by your total outcomes. So when we're calculating probability, guys, right? Okay, we know that probability is equal to your favorable outcomes divided by, right? Your total outcomes comes right so what are the favorable outcomes in this case right the favorable outcomes we want to determine the probability that one of the doors that needs to be changed is not an exterior door so in other words our favorable outcomes is that one of the doors is actually what an exterior door right divided by one of the total outcomes is the total doors that we have in this house all right so now all that we need to do is we just need to count how many exterior doors do we have right how many interior uh how many exterior doors do we have how many total doors do we have using the floor plan um that is given to us all right so let's basically count now how many exterior doors do we have so we want to count the exterior doors are the doors that lead to the outside right okay so the doors that lead to outside right are how many doors it's one two doors so these are our x exterior doors just two so we've got two exterior doors okay and then remember we want the total doors that we have right so how many total doors does this floor plan have we want to count one two three four we're going to count this again okay five six so it has six total doors okay so all that we need to do now we're going to substitute two for our exterior doors six for our total doors and we are just going to now um get the probability of that in simplified form okay so let us do that so we know that we said that our exterior doors are equal to two exterior doors divided by your um Okay, divided by your total doors. We said it's six, right? But now, guys, this is not in simplified form. Two over six is not in simplified form. We can further on simplify this answer. How can we simplify this? Two goes into itself once and it goes uh, into six three times. Okay, so in simplified form, the probability, okay, uh, uh, that one of the doors that needs to be changed is got one of the interior doors is equal to one over three okay so that is our final answer for question 2.4 question 2.5 says jan remarked that the kitchen gets a lot of sunlight now we need to critically comment on um his remark so when we have to critically comment on this right we now are going to use the knowledge that we know when it comes to now the sunlight um in south africa and which rooms get the most sunlight in the southern hemisphere right remember guys you've been talking about this in in class okay about rooms that get the most sunlight especially when you guys are dealing with this topic and what did we discuss right in class we spoke about okay rooms especially in the uh the southern hemisphere we're not talking about other countries guys we're talking about south africa or actually countries that are in the southern hemisphere okay so we know that in south africa if you want to get sunlight okay um or if you want a room that has a lot of sunlight okay you'll need to basically get a room that is facing the north okay so we want to now basically check when it comes to the floor plan um yaga j okay oh yeah j jan okay is the kitchen facing the north Okay, if we can basically conclude that um, the kitchen is facing the north, then we can say that, okay, the kitchen gets a lot of sunlight. But if her kitchen is not facing the north, then her, her um, comment or her uh, remark is incorrect. Okay, so that is basically what we're trying to check because we know in the southern hemisphere, if you want a room that has a lot of light, that room needs to face the north. Okay, so let us see. Let us see. Let us have a look at um, this floor plan that is given here 
and have a look at the kitchen and determine whether our kitchen is facing the north or what okay so what do we see where is our kitchen here is our kitchen right then we're gonna look at the kitchen window okay where is the kitchen window facing okay is the kitchen window facing the north what do we see about the kitchen window is it facing the north right we see this is our kitchen window here okay and mm -mm, guys we can already see it's not facing the north right if it was facing the north it would be it would it, the kitchen is supposed to be somewhere on this side do you see that but it's not somewhere on that side okay so that basically says that our kitchen is not facing the north but it's facing what our kitchen is on this side it's facing the the south okay so in this case we can conclude that okay the kitchen window is actually facing the south therefore her remark is incorrect okay her kitchen can't be getting a lot of sunlight okay so we can just conclude then that her remark Okay, so we can say that uh, Jan's remark is incorrect. The kitchen window is actually facing the south and not the north. Therefore, it doesn't get a lot of sunlight. Okay, okay. And I explained why that is so, um, especially in the context of the southern hemisphere. All right. And let us have a look at question 2.6. In question 2.6, guys, it says, give one reason why the windows shown in the above drawing do not represent the windows of the kitchen and the dining room. Okay. Remember, guys, when you looked at the floor plan, we saw that when you enter the, uh, the house from the veranda, no? okay especially because they said based on the pictures that we see based on the um based on the above drawing okay so based on this above drawing if you had to now enter this house right when you enter this house right um via the veranda right you will see that you're actually entering what the living room okay you're entering the living room okay okay so from here the windows that are actually um represented here right are the windows for what okay we see that it's the windows for the living room area okay it's the windows for your living room area right and it's also the windows for the bedroom it does not show the window for your kitchen okay so now based on that we already know the windows that are represented here it's the living room uh window as well as the bedroom window right so now we need to give a reason why the windows show do not represent that okay so we can basically say that okay when it comes to the kitchen okay we know that the kitchen here right it's on the side do you see that it's on the side however the drawing just uh represents the front view it does not represent the side view okay so you can write that as a reason Okay, that the kitchen is on the side, not the front. So we can just say that the drawing represents the front view and not the side view. So you can even say the kitchen should be on the left hand side with the window and the door, something along those lines. Okay, so it, your, your, the, the reason that you basically give basically needs to make sense in terms of what you are actually seeing that is happening here. Okay, so here you can have different reasons based on um that it makes sense okay all right so i'm just gonna say the drawing shows the front view and the kitchen is um on the side or you can say the left hand side and not the front right so that is it for question 2.1 all the way up until question 2.6 right so i hope i was able to clarify everything here right let us have a look at question 2.7 right so in question 2.7 guys here we're going to be now um measuring the distance and we're going to uh, uh, measuring the length right and then we're going to convert that measured length into an actual length so please make sure that you um pay attention here right so question 2.7 says the scale used for the floor plan is one centimeter representing a thousand millimeters in real life right so they are telling us that the scale used here right is one centimeter so one centimeter on this um plan represents 
a thousand millimeters in real life okay so now question 2.1 point 2.7.1 says write the given scale in number scale format okay guys when we're writing a scale in number scale format remember guys in the previous video tutorial we spoke about a line scale we spoke about a bar scale we spoke about a number scale right and when we spoke about a number scale how did a number scale look right it was one is two 10, 1 is to 100, 1 is to 10,000, right? So our number scale looked something like this. We didn't have units, right, that were going on there, right? So now we basically need to now try, actually not try, convert this scale that we were given into the correct format uh scale format of a number scale how do we do that okay it's nice and easy okay all that we need to do we first need to ensure that the units are the same in this side this side we, we've got units in centimeters this side we've got units in millimeters okay that means that we first need to then make the units the same we need to make it into um, um millimeters and millimeters or centimeters and centimeters okay so in this case i'm going to change my scale into millimeters and uh actually i'm going to make it centimeters and millimeters and millimeters okay so let's see what do we know i'm going to just refer back to here if we're converting from um centimeters to millimeters what do we do okay based on this diagram here remember when we're moving from centimeters to millimeters you multiplied by 10 okay you see here we're moving from centimeters to millimeters you multiplied by 10 okay so now if you want to now convert these centimeters into millimeters we're going to multiply this one by 10 okay so if you take the one and you multiply by 10 what do you get okay you will get 10 millimeters okay right so we've got 10 millimeters to a thousand millimeters right but remember guys when we're working with ratios guys you can't leave your ratio in that format or in that form okay we have to have one is to something so for us to have one is to something right what do we still need to do here we still need to divide by the value that is on the left hand side so if you divide by 10 on the left hand side divide by 10 on the right hand side guys because what you do on the left hand side you need to do on the right hand side if you divide by 10 millimeters on the left hand side divide by 10 millimeters on the right hand side what do you see 10 millimeters divided by 10 millimeters okay gives us one is two right a thousand millimeters divided by 10 millimeters the millimeters and the millimeters are cancelling right and you'll be left with a hundred okay so now we've basically now converted the scale into the correct format for our number scale or okay someone might just say that okay or you can just say you've got one centimeters is to a thousand right uh millimeters so another person will be like i want to convert these millimeters into centimeters because the left hand side is already as one okay that makes my life easy so if it's your left hand side is already one you can say one centimeters is two how can i convert these millimeters into centimeters we're going to have a look at this drawing here to convert from millimeters or from millimeters to centimeters you divide by 10 okay so we're going to divide by 10 so if you take a thousand and you divide by 10 what do you get a hundred centimeters because you're converting there right and then still here guys we can't leave this ratio and this form where there are units there, right? So you need to divide, okay, by the centimeter. Divide by the centimeter. We divide by centimeter, divide by the centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, right? What do you see here, right? What do you see here? You basically see that now, okay? The centimeter, centimeter cancel, centimeter, centimeter cancel, and you'll have your scale in the correct format your number scale in the correct format one is to 
a hundred okay so that is basically how you can um tackle this question there that is our final answer one is to a hundred and i've given you guys two ways in which you can basically approach that one okay let's have a look at question 2.7.2 measure the inner length of the bedroom too and use the given scale to calculate the actual date right so we first have to measure the length of bedroom two the inner length okay right and then we need to now convert that in a length into what the length is in real life using now this number scale that we've just uh calculated here okay so how do you do that guys please take notes i am using a digital copy i'm just going to show you how you should go about um doing this question right uh but please follow with me and then i'll give you guys what the actual figures are supposed to be um if you actually printed out um this copy and you've got the hard copy okay right so let's see so what are we going to do right we want to get what is the inner length of bedroom two right so the inner length of bedroom two okay is not this length okay this is the outer length okay right okay and it's not this length yeah because that is the length for the bedroom two and the master bedroom combined it's not that length there because that also contains the living room it is this length there right so we want to basically measure the length from there to there and get what that is on the page and then now we are going to then convert that into the actual length in real life okay so i'm going to measure that length um in centimeters right okay so if you measure my the length in centimeters here all right you have to position your ruler uh, properly there starts from there okay and i'm getting like a three point this is five six seven eight i'm getting 3.8 centimeters okay but please note i'm gonna give you um the actual values that you guys are supposed to get but i am getting 3.8 centimeters okay so i'm going to show you how you're supposed to now work with this to get the actual length but at the same time i'll show you on the right hand side what the actual values are supposed to be now so here let's basically do that guys let us um get the actual value okay so this is 2.7.2 okay so what is the measured length okay so we got that our measured length is equal to i got it to be 3.8 centimeters okay so this is the soft copy my uh when i say soft copy this is the electronic um copy right but if you have a physical copy or a hard copy okay paper with you right this is the values that you should be getting i'll share that with you once i'm done with the calculations okay right so we found that our measured length is equal to 3.8 centimeters right and now we have to now use the number scale one is to a hundred to help us basically convert this value into an actual value in real life how do we do that we already got that the measured length is 3.8 centimeters one unit in on paper right is equal to a hundred units in real life okay so now for us to be able to get what the units are in real life right so the actual length is actually just going to be the 3.8 centimeters multiplied by the hundred because we want what the units are in real life so you're just gonna multiply by what we want which is that 100 there okay so if you type the, punch it into your calculator you'll find that the actual length in in real life for my soft copy is equal to 380 centimeters okay but if you have a hard copy now you've printed this past paper and you are now measuring with your ruler there at home right the measured length that you're supposed to get is is plus minus 4.4 centimeters okay that is what you're supposed to get right so we're going to still use the same concept we're going to use our our number scale one is to a hundred right then this is the units 
on paper. So one unit on paper is equal to a hundred units in real life. Okay, so we're gonna take to get our actual length. What do we do? Okay, we're basically going to take that four point four centimeters multiplied by what we want. We want the actual length in real life. Okay, okay. So you multiply by a hundred. And you'll find that now the value in real life for the length of your inner wall in real life is actually equal to 440 centimeters. However, you're not going to just stop here, right? Because, I mean, when you're dealing with real life scenarios, when you're now... Um, at home you're not gonna measure now the length in centimeters guys we measure it in meters okay right if you've had renovations done at your house you'll see that when the, the your the contractors are working there right they measure it in meters so now we need to now convert these units into meters right and how do we convert into meters i'm gonna to refer you back to that diagram that i've done here right where I was doing the conversions from centimeters, conversions and how you need to move from a bigger unit to a small unit, right? In this case, we want to move from centimeters to meters, okay? So we want to move from here, right? We want to move from here. We want to move from the centimeters to the meters. So how do you move from a smaller unit to a bigger unit in this case? For us to move from centimeters to meters, you need to divide by 100, okay? So in this case, we are going to divide this answer that we've got here of 440 centimeters by 100. If we divide by 100, that will give us now the units for the actual length of our inner wall in meters, okay? Therefore, we're going to just take the 440 centimeters you're gonna divide by 100 because you want the units in meters okay so if you divide by 100 you will get that actually okay the length of this inner wall is actually equal to 4.4 meters okay so that is how you're supposed to um tackle question 2.7.2 okay so a tip here right when you're now measuring your floor plan okay if you, you want to decide if you should measure your floor plan in millimeters or in centimeters measure your floor plan in centimeters because they told you that the floor plan is one centimeters representing a thousand millimeters in real life okay so measure in one centimeters right it's just gonna make it uh better because you that is what the information is telling you that the floor plan is one centimeters to something okay so measure in centimeters and not in uh millimeters when you're now measuring the inner wall of um the bedroom okay all right so now i'm i'm, I'm getting a bit tired this is actually the first time that i'm gonna attempt to do a whole paper in one day so yeah guys uh yeah comment down below and and, and congratulate me because yeah I'm, at this point i think i'm doing a lot hey eh? um yeah but then that is basically how you're supposed to tackle question two point um seven point two guys and i hope i basically explained everything to you guys in detail just so you guys just give you guys a perspective on how they would measure now this question right the first thing is for question two point um okay they'll basically give you one on one mark right for the fact that you um got the measured lens right to be 4.4 okay centimeters you'll get a one mark for that and that you basically noted that it's the measured length okay then you'll get another mark for multiplying that 4.4 centimeters by 100 the fact that you've converted the measured length into the actual length okay then you'll get another mark for that answer of 440 centimeters and then you'll get your final mark of 4.4 meters so that is how you'll basically get your four marks um for this question all right let us have a look at question 2.7.3 it says jan stated that the given scale is not 
very accurate to use um if photocopies were going to be made of the plan okay so what do we see guys you know when you make photocopies let's think of this now practically né? you'll find that when you make photocopies depending on now how your photocopy machine yeah, it is or it functions it finds that some photocopy machines when you make a copy they will like um thicken the line or make it smaller depending on the ink or the strength of uh, whether you use the the photocopy machine has ink or not okay so now based on this if you now make a copy of this um floor plan okay the scale okay of the plan will be affected now if you had to now for example now make a copy and then um, um measure the distance that will basically change because of now probably the ink will now make the certain lines thicker or thinner and so on and so forth so it could change um the accuracy of the measured distances right right but then the number scale will remain the same so we can see that now from this jan is actually correct that um if you make a photocopy it will basically affect the accuracy if you had to now move from the measured distance to the actual distance based on the fact that now it will you know sometimes when you make a copy it the lines will be thicker some will be smaller and so on and so forth i think you guys know what i'm talking about okay when you guys make copies okay so her statement is um correct so, so jen is correct okay and then that is the final answer here that question 2.7.3 is that jen is correct okay when a copy is made okay the size of the plan is not actually yeah the plan may change okay however um the number scale stays the same all right and um that is the final answer there all right so we are basically done guys with um question two the whole of question two where we basically had to now um analyze the elevation of the house as well as the floor plan um i hope i managed to clarify all concepts there for question two okay that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload a distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy Bye, guys.